T-Mobile was very popular in the early 2000s, but as smartphones became popular, T-Mobile fell into an abyss losing several billion dollars per year in 2012 and 2013. Despite this, T-Mobile has somehow been able to compete against Verizon and AT&T and grow to be a strong player once again. So why did T-Mobile fail in the first place and how were they able to make such a strong comeback? Make sure to stick around till the end of this video to find out. Welcome to Hari's Hobbies. So the history of T-Mobile is actually very short as it was established very recently in 1994. They were originally called Voicestream Wireless PCS and they were a subsidy of Western Wireless Corporation. They provided digital wireless personal communication services to 19 FCC defined metropolitan areas. This was perfect for Western Wireless as it allowed them to expand into urban service. And this greatly complemented their analog rural service, Cellular One. On June 1st, 2001, Dutch Telecom acquired Voicestream Wireless for $35 billion. And by the end of 2001, they had 19,000 employees serving over 7 million customers. Soon they changed their name to T-Mobile USA Inc. and started expanding rapidly into California and Nevada. T-Mobile's flip phones and their prepaid services were so popular that anyone who lived there in time period probably knows the T-Mobile jingle. They continued to grow and in 2007, they acquired Suncom Wireless Holdings for $2.4 billion. This added 1.1 million more customers and expanded service across the US. But right after this, smartphones really took off and no one wanted T-Mobile's flip phones. And nobody wanted their terrible 2G only network for their smartphones either. This demolished T-Mobile in just a couple of years and Dutch Telecom was looking to sell T-Mobile to someone else. In 2011, AT&T offered $39 billion to acquire T-Mobile. This would have been great for AT&T as it would push their user count to 130 million subscribers making them the largest wireless network in America. But the US Department of Justice blocked the acquisition and this meant trouble for T-Mobile. Their stock prices had plummeted, they were losing money left and right, and the future seemed pretty bleak for T-Mobile. But T-Mobile's fate would completely change as John Ledger was appointed as CEO in September of 2012. He had a vast experience working as an executive at AT&T for almost 20 years and also working at Dell for several years before that. And just one month after he comes in, they merged with Metro PCS. This gave T-Mobile much more financial resources which allowed them to expand their LTU networks. John Ledger was all about the on-carrier approach. This was his policy. We'll buy your business, we'll give you a stupidly good deal, and we'll make sure that it's a safe decision. Urban legends say that an employee once told Ledger that their network sucks. And he replied, you're framing the question wrong. It should be, at what price does our network not suck, and then price it at that level. And that's exactly what they did. They had no contracts, low prices, global coverage, global free roaming, tethering, and of course, unlimited data at never before seen prices. Every time they saw something that customers hated, they fixed it, and they relentlessly added stuff that customers wanted. They still had bad service, especially compared to their competitors. But there's a huge demographic that's okay with mediocre service for really low prices. And at this time, with iPhone sales through the roof with the iPhone 6, this is actually what made sense for most buyers. And that's how they captured so much market share in such a short period of time. Now they had the customers, and to keep them, they provided great customer service. There was no hidden fees and no overage costs. There was none of that crap that people hated from the other carriers. And perfect for T-Mobile, all of their competitors were distracted with other ventures. AT&T was busy looking for video customers buying DirecTV. They were also trying to buy Time Warner, but that was held up by the antitrust cops. And as for Verizon, they were busy fixing their stupid mistakes or, as they would call it, offsetting their investments. They went out and bought AOL for $4.4 billion. AOL! I'm sure they had their reasons. Or not. But either way, in the end, this forced them to sell a lot of their network in order to afford it. And as for Sprint, Sprint was struggling with massive debt as they were the weird option in the cellular market. They were kind of trying to match T-Mobile with their super cheap unlimited plans, but then they still had contracts. They were really weird. I think Sprint was very busy trying to figure out who they were target and what even they were doing themselves. And this gave T-Mobile the perfect opportunity to steal all of these customers. 
And after stealing all of these customers, T-Mobile has been able to build a great brand loyalty with their transparency. 25% of T-Mobile customers would never switch to another network no matter the reason. This is only true for 16% of AT&T customers, 15% of Verizon customers, and 7% of Sprint customers. T-Mobile cleverly took advantage of their competitors' fogged goals. And as T-Mobile grew and got more money, they were buying the networks that AT&T and Verizon were selling off in order to fund their other ventures. This allowed T-Mobile to significantly improve their networks and increase their prices and still offer a good deal to the public. They have increased their 4 member unlimited data plan from $100 to $120 to $140 to now $160, which is a total of a 60% increase. But the thing is, this only affects new users. The original prices still stand for the people who bought them at those prices. Pretty much all carriers do this. They don't increase your fees if the fees increase for new customers, but they also don't decrease your fees if the fees decrease for new customers. So I guess it could be a positive or a negative, but T-Mobile made sure to keep the original customers very happy. And T-Mobile really marketed the unlimited plans as they made more money on these than compared to limited plans. And T-Mobile was really smart about this. Their unlimited plans weren't that much more expensive than their limited plans. And as a result, a lot of people will spend the extra 10 to $20 a month to get an unlimited plan, but then they would only end up using a couple of gigabytes per month. These people probably could have spent $20 less and got an unlimited plan and would have been fine. And T-Mobile gets to pocket all of that extra cash. In fact, only 3% of mobile users have unlimited plans with T-Mobile actually utilize it to its full potential. So the other 97% of people would actually be better off by buying a cheaper plan. But since T-Mobile's plans are so similar in price, people often think that they're getting a good deal by going with unlimited plan. And that's because it is a good deal, but the problem is that you probably won't take advantage of it. And T-Mobile really capitalized on this. People buy it simply because they think it's a good deal, not because they actually need it. And this has allowed T-Mobile to make huge profits and they have become vastly successful. In fact, I just checked on their online site and I don't even think they offer limited plans anymore. You may be able to find it if you dig deep into their website, but as for the mainstream US market, I don't even think they offer limited plans anymore. It's similar tactics to what buffets use and it has clearly worked for T-Mobile. You may have recently heard in the news that T-Mobile is trying to acquire Sprint and take all their customers. They are still having trouble with getting regulars to approve the deal, but they are still trying. This has actually led to 10 states suing in an effort to stop the acquisition. And just last week, both companies announced that final verdict would come no later than July 2019. So we'll know what happens in just a couple of weeks, but what does this all mean for T-Mobile? Well, in quarter 3 of 2018, Verizon had 153.9 million customers and AT&T had 150.2 million customers. T-Mobile had pretty much half of that at 77.2 million customers and Sprint had 53.5 million customers. But merging with Sprint would get T-Mobile to 130 million customers. This would take them from having just half of what their competitors had to having almost 90%. And if they continue to grow at the rate they have been growing in the past couple of years, they would completely destroy Verizon and AT&T. And this type of domination is what the government doesn't want and that's why we see so much controversy about it. Now, what's ironic about all of this is that just a couple of years ago, when T-Mobile was in its ditch, Sprint was considering to buy them. But now, it's the exact opposite way around with Sprint being in a ditch and T-Mobile trying to buy them. Now, why Sprint failed can be a video in itself, so make sure to comment that down below if you'd like to see that. But anyways, that pretty much summarizes T-Mobile's efforts with Sprint. And through all of these efforts, Ledger has been able to revitalize T-Mobile since he became CEO in 2012. Since he has been appointed, the T-Mobile customer base has over doubled, but he isn't satisfied even yet. He wants to dominate the market beating Verizon and AT&T through their Sprint acquisition. Stock prices are still not as high as they used to be in the early 2000s when they were over $100 per share. But they have been consistently growing and they are around $75 per share right now, which is a significant improvement over the almost single digit price shares in 2012. And the main reason for all of this success is that John Ledger was able to humanize T-Mobile. He gave customers what they wanted for prices cheaper than even what they were willing to pay. This has built a great brand loyalty and forced your competitors to follow in T-Mobile's footsteps.
Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint have all started offering unlimited plans for cheaper prices and slashed cellular contracts. But despite all of this, T-Mobile is still growing at a rate faster than ever before. Today, T-Mobile is the third largest cellular network in the United States and they have truly revolutionized the cellular market by offering prices never seen before. The whole company just started 25 years ago, but now they have grown to challenge the market leaders. They have had the number of failures, but under new leadership and a focus on helping and benefiting a customer, they have really gotten successful. And this has allowed them to go from the 2G crap service to pushing 5G. And this is how T-Mobile became the behemoth that they are today. But that's all I have for you guys on T-Mobile. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.